I think it's pretty undeniable that compared to the success that Stacey experienced in 2021, the group's 2022 run has been a little bit more shaky. There, what seemed to be a solid fanbase has been dispersing to fandoms of more popular groups, and now Stacey's future seems a little bit more uncertain than it did in the past. Which is kind of crazy because last year they were arguably a top 3 girl group who looked like they were on their way straight to the top. So why is this happening? Why are so many people dropping a group that everyone thought would dominate 4th gen just a few months ago? Hey everyone, I'm Planet Minje, and today's video is going to be an essay on what's happening with Stacey right now, as well as an analysis on the general behavior of K-pop stands. This video is meant to be more conversational than anything, and is not meant to spread hate towards Stacey, so please don't think that's what I'm trying to do. And if you like my content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Alright, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. I think to get a better understanding of the problem at hand, we need to do a bit of a background on Stacey's history. To start off, the group debuted with the song So Bad in 2022 under the company High Up Entertainment. High Up Entertainment was founded by the music producing duo Black Eyed Pilsung who created mega K-pop hits such as Twice's Cheer Up and Fancy, or A Pink's Dum Durum and Ung Ung. So there were a lot of people anticipating the debut of the company's first girl group. And I think it's safe to say that So Bad was an instant success. Currently, the song's music video has over 33 million views, and other related videos such as the music show performances broke on multiple occasions 1 million views as well. With their debut, Stacey quickly gained a large international fanbase that helped their first album sell over 70,000 copies worldwide. However, that international success didn't translate to the Korean market, with So Bad only peaking at number 159 on the Gaon Weekly Digital Chart, and it wasn't until the group's first comeback with the song ASAP that they they were able to get a grasp on the domestic market. When Stacey had their first comeback in April of 2021, they experienced exponential growth both domestically and worldwide. ASAP peaked at number 9 on Korea's Gaon Weekly Digital Chart, 150 places above So Bad's peak, and has hit over 56 million views on YouTube. This was also their first album to sell over 100,000 copies, but what's really important is that this song started the trend of their songs going viral on TikTok. ASAP has been used in tens if not hundreds of thousands of videos on the platform, and this trend only continued with their subsequent title tracks Stereotype and Run To You. With Stereotype being their most internationally successful song and most streamed on platforms such as Spotify. For about a year and a half, the group just continued to have smash hit after smash hit, gaining more fans each and every time. But things started to shift with the release of their most recent comeback titled Beautiful Monster. Stacy Girls Beautiful Monster is arguably Stacey's most unsuccessful release yet, having 37 million views on YouTube, which is less than all of their music videos besides So Bad, the song has been a bit of a bump in the road in the group's career. Though the accompanying mini-album has had their highest sales yet, the social media buzz surrounding the song has been less than positive to say the least. Extra videos for the song, like The Dance Practice, have not yet hit a million views while all of their other title track dance practices have gained at least 2 million clicks. The song on TikTok, according to the app, has been used in less than 20,000 videos, and none of the song's music show stages have more than 500,000 views, making it their first single to not have any stage reach a million. So, expectedly, this is also Stacey's most commonly disliked title track. Contrary to the overwhelmingly positive reception to their previous releases, people had lots of complaints about Beautiful Monster, ranging from things such as the genre, to the vocals, to even the choreography. You could argue that So Bad is Stacey's title track that deviates most from their core, trendy sound, but Lots of people, including myself, would put Beautiful Monster in that category. Straying away from their usual upbeat, youthful sound, Beautiful Monster has a more nostalgic and down-tempo instrumental, and features more extreme vocals than the group usually showcases. This sound is one that's not really the most popular within K-pop, and one that most Stacey fans aren't used to, so a lot of people called the song boring or forgettable. Others have complained that the members struggle to sing some of the more difficult sections, and the choreography has many times been called awkward as well. These opinions have all kind of been clustered together and created the general consensus that this is Stacey's worst era so far. Of course, usually this wouldn't be much of a big deal, but for some reason, the hate for this era has gotten a little bit extreme. Lots of former Stacey stands have ended up dropping the group altogether, and there's even been this narrative that Stacey have quote-unquote fallen off. So you're probably wondering why so many people have started unstanding Stacey entirely after Beautiful Monster. Considering that one comeback usually isn't enough for fans of a group to to stop supporting them, and it definitely isn't enough to claim that they've fallen off. 
Well, I think a big reason for that is the huge amount of competition recently when it comes to 4th gen girl groups. Obviously, 2022 has been the year for 4th gen girl groups. This year alone, we've had groups like La Seraphim, New Jeans, and Kepler debut to join the ranks of already dominating forces such as Itzy, Espa, and G Idol. And don't even get me started on the mega success of Ive. We've also had the solo debut of Nyan with Pop and the return of veteran girl groups such as Blackpink and Girls' Generation, all of whom have been insanely successful within the K pop scene. The level of success that these groups have had is somewhat unprecedented, especially especially considering the huge amount of them that have had these great moments. Therefore, when you look at Stacey, who have still had an objectively fine run this year, still, their lack of viral and explosive success with Beautiful Monster looks a lot worse in comparison than it actually is. A while ago, there was a pretty viral moment going around where the top 10 spots in the Melon charts, Melon is the most popular music streaming service in Korea by the way, all of the top 10 spots were held by K-pop girl groups, with other girl groups filling many of the places just below as well. However, despite ASAP dominating the charts in 2021, Stacey currently have no songs even within the Melon Top 100. So when you put them next to any of the dominating artists this year, they look a lot worse. Now, of course, usually the success of a group or artist wouldn't drive away fans if they were simply there for the music, but as we all know, the reality of K-pop is a little bit more complex than that, and the more successful a group is, the more likely it is that people will want to support them. And for some reason, a lot of K-pop stands have trouble liking a song or a group that isn't as popular as others, which I feel like comes from a fear of being left out. <laughs> Something that I've noticed recently is that it seems like K-pop stands have a bit of an obsession with getting into and supporting the next big thing. Now, this does somewhat make sense because the industry always pushes new groups into the limelight, and even veteran groups that have been staples in the industry for years seem to eventually take a back seat to let younger groups shine. But still, I'm always surprised to see how quickly K-pop stands will drop one group and start standing the next one that has a breakout hit. With Stacey, it felt like everybody was standing them, from ASAP to Run to You. But once Beautiful Monster came out, people switched over and started standing groups like New Jeans and Ive, seemingly forgetting about their so-called favorite group after they released one song that they didn't like. In order to flock to, sorry for my corny wording, the new cool kids. To be honest, in the music industry, this actually doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world. In a perfect world, it would be a good thing if people didn't have such strong dedications to K-pop groups who they will likely never talk to in their lives, and felt free to casually support whichever one they felt like at the time. But I feel like in reality, this phenomenon does a bit more harm than most realize. See, the problem I have with so many K-pop stands switching from standing group to group willy-nilly is that most of the time, it's not based on music, it's based on popularity. And furthermore, K-pop stands like to act as if they have some sort of claim over the popularity of these groups. Since streaming and buying albums and even engaging in fan wars is such a big part of K-pop stan world, I know that so many people get some sort of self-fulfillment out of seeing their favorite group succeed and kind of view these K-pop groups achievements as their own. They see the big number of sales their faves got, or how their song is rising in the charts, and subconsciously think that they were a part of that and it makes them feel good about themselves whether they admit it or not. So when their current favorite group stops being as successful as they once were, they stop feeling good about themselves and start standing a more popular group so they can get that feeling again, which is honestly really concerning to me. If we're being serious, somebody's favorite K-pop group getting a music show win or a million album sales is not actually going to improve the lives of their fans, and isn't even the kind of experience you can share with anybody because you personally are not friends with those idols. So any time spent on those achievements is somewhat wasted because there's no real payoff for you. Of course, K-pop is a hobby, and most hobbies don't really have many real-world benefits either, but I find that nowadays, this this sort of mindset is becoming the main way that a lot of K-pop stands interact with K-pop as a whole, which takes away from what the actual appeal of the genre is supposed to be. Rather than enjoying a K-pop song because you like it, the real enjoyment for a lot of people comes from convincing other people to also like it. And instead of simply enjoying a performance because it's good, a lot of people's first instinct is to try and make other people be impressed with it as well. This makes me believe that a lot of K-pop stands are actually just clout chasing instead of actually enjoying the content that they're consuming. 
they don't actually like the art, they just like the power of being able to influence people on social media. People want to create and be a part of the new big trend because then they'll be able to get those social media interactions that bring them temporary joy. So they'll pretend to like something that they don't in order to get that. Which, in the grand scheme of things, kind of kills the genre of K-pop as a whole. Rather than consume and support content because we actually like it, people are consuming content because other people are and they want to fit in with those around them, which is not how art and music are supposed to work. Liking music because it's popular and not because it's good removes the incentive for companies to make good music. If making mediocre music that's trendy sells better, then people will just start doing that instead. And rewarding subpar music that's trendy prevents groups from experimenting with new sounds, and doesn't let them step outside of their comfort zone. I've seen thousands of complaints talking about how nothing in K-pop is exciting these days, and I blame that largely on K-pop stands' inability to appreciate or reward groups for taking people by surprise. See the reception of TWICE deviating from their original cute concepts, or even Kepler just this year not sticking with their debut image. K-pop groups will only stay at the top if they continue to be trendy, and the second that isn't the case, people stop supporting them entirely. All in all, I think this is a big encapsulation of how K-pop stands aren't really able to make their own conclusions or do any thinking on their own, and prefer to follow what's popular at the moment instead. There lacks a sense of individualism from K-pop stands that fans of other genres are able to exhibit easily, kind of exposing the lack of critical thinking skills that listeners of this genre hold, which could be the downfall of K-pop in its entirety. Why would companies make good music if good music doesn't sell well? And what's the point of engaging with the community if the community is encouraging this to happen? These are the questions that I've seen a lot of people ask themselves before stepping away from K-pop entirely, and I don't blame them at the end of the day. There's lots of things wrong with K-pop, and a large percent of us are part of the reason why. So maybe it's time to reevaluate how we engage with the genre. Now, before I end the video, I thought about some counter arguments and questions that some of you may have for me after watching the video, and I want to address them now so people can hear what I have to say. First off, I feel like a lot of people will say, but you disliked a bunch of really unique comebacks that happened this year. And this is true, actually. 2022 hasn't been a completely unoriginal and boring year when it comes to what's been put out. There's a pretty decent amount of original sounds and concepts that have been done, and I've both liked and disliked some of them. Here's the thing. Just because something is unique doesn't mean that I or you have to enjoy it. But your opinion should come from your own brain. I feel like there's such a big bandwagon approach to how K-pop fans feel about different songs, and because so many people will voice their love or hate for a particular track, other people also feel like they need to have the same opinion. But really, it's not that deep. No one's gonna love or hate you more because of your opinion on a song, and if they do, then that's not somebody you should even want to have any kind of relationship with. Listen to the song and create your own opinion on it that isn't influenced by what the people around you think, and as long as you do that, then whatever opinion you have is valid. I don't have a problem with people disliking experimental tracks, I just have a problem with people disliking them only because other people told them so. Another thing I can see people saying is, don't you get personal gratitude from MCND's achievements? For those of you who don't know, MCND is my all-time favorite group, and the answer to that is no. I like seeing them succeed for sure, and it does make me happy when they win an award or whatever, but I don't hold any type of ownership over that success. I am aware enough of my position as a fan to know that their success is due to their own hard work, and though I do promote them a lot on my channel, I know that I'm not a deciding factor when it comes to their fame. I also am a fan of them because I genuinely love their music and think they are amazing performers. I didn't get into them because they were trendy, I literally just saw their music videos on my For You page and got into them naturally from there. They actually just have my favorite discography in K-pop and are my favorite performers as well. That's it. Oh, and also, I mean, their visuals too. The third counter-argument that I wanted to address is people saying that you're allowed to unstand because you didn't like a comeback. And that's true, but did you unstand because you didn't like it, or did you unstand because you saw 5,000 other people say they unstand as well, and then subconsciously were influenced by them and came to the same conclusion? If it's genuinely because you just didn't like the song, then this video isn't about you. 
And finally, the last kind of argument is, this is just how K-pop works. It's been like this since Gen 1. And trust me when I say I'm not some secret fourth gen hater. I know how the industry works, but I'm allowed to simultaneously love K-pop and at the same time acknowledge its flaws and the flaws within its consumer base. So I think that just about wraps everything up. If you made it this far, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, and if you want to see more content from me, consider subscribing. And as always, now we're going to thank all of our channel members, so without further ado, thank you Opijin Itzy, Wu Twice Tease, Dog, What's OP, Zeus112, Jackie, Zavi H, Wu Youngi, Yin Latte, Jed, Soda Scribbles, Minacore, Adrian Wang, Shiny, Mel T, Mizu Monorovie, Fix on Jung, Cassie, Frago Bobo, Gav, Adifa N, Irene, Chili's Cafe, Mello, Ale, Julia Peterson, Che, 97th Heaven, Frosty Plays, Julian Zalazar, J, Alpha Fox, Edgy Does Things, Namjoon's Last AirPods, Julia, Ray, Q Can Love, Shazel Slay, Kaylin Caster, Exi Oin, Elizabeth Allinger, Sonorinth, and Miriam. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel, and I'll see everybody watching in the next video. Peace out.